guys, I'm John. It is Saturday, uh, April 27th. In this video, I'm going to talk about motherboards here in 2024. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to apologize with the camera. Uh, CPU socket compatibility, uh, especially with Intel with their insane budget. There's no excuses. Uh, PCI Express versus NVMe. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, NVMe optional wires. Um, AMD's 670 and 770, I believe, uh, chipsets, the extreme versions, why they should be using three chips instead of just two. Uh, trash onboard audio, debugging LED codes on all motherboards, period, no exception. Uh, Intel parts in AMD, that's just, yeah, we're going to get into that. Uh, Intel making profit um, from forcing to buy more, sorry, uh, more motherboards and uh, all their chips that they make, like LAN and whatnot. Um, so, uh, I apologize, um, My I have three webcams, and right now I'm forced to use a trash one. I have a high-end Logitech one, but because it's a 4K, it has to be directly connected to um, a high-power USB, and I don't have that because I actually have the, my computer out in the hallway, otherwise the room I'm in would be like another 5-10 degrees hotter. And I'm already in Florida, and I don't have the best roommate, we'll put it that way. Alright, so CPU socket compatibility. I think this is a, a, a major issue that um, AMD has generally addressed, but because they have been weakened by just decades of Intel's criminal activity, their anti-competitiveness, their anti-consumer uh, criminal activity, um, that I think what they did with Socket AM4 was pretty much a miracle. Uh, and they got screwed over by motherboard vendors using the, the very smaller um, BIOS ROM chips. Well, it's not BIOS, it's a UEFI. I don't care. I'm going to call it BIOS. Anyway, um, so another issue is because I'm looking to be upgrading because I'm still stuck on an AM4 motherboard and it's a great system and all that. Um, as I'm looking at AM5 motherboards, I know I have zero consideration for Intel because as a businessman, a legitimate businessman, I look at Intel, and Intel uh, and NVIDIA are both explicitly um, very criminal. A lot of uh, corporations are actually uh, criminal organizations uh, because there's a point past which you have a business that has some criminal elements versus a business that's been basically be has become a criminal organization that operates like a business. Anyway, um, PCI Express. So I'm looking at... I've dealt with hacks, not on my web platform, but with my actual, my desktop computers, uh, both the uh, Socket AM4 and AM3 Plus, uh, with what people call government. It's government, it's actually more criminal organizations, and so I don't want to use onboard rate anymore. Um, I'm done with using onboard rate. And one of the issues I, I, I have with motherboards of late, um, I like NVMe hard drives. I think they're fantastic. I think that's a good direction in general, but I need more than three PCI Express slots on a full ATX motherboard in 2024. Uh, I'm going to go over some of, uh, two of the main reasons, um, but basically, yeah, um, with a RAID card, I'm looking at four slot NVMe um, 16x expansion cards. Those that's four, and these NVMe card uh, drives use four PSA Express lightnings. Okay, so that means that I'm going to need a full 16x slot, that's a full 16x electrical slot on the motherboard. Well, unless you're going with a, a high-end HEDT, high-end desktop uh, system, um, you're going to get one 16x electrical slot. Now, I'm not talking about the physical slot because you have a, you have a, the, most of these boards have like three 16x physical slots, but only the top slot is electrically 16. So if you go with a, um, you might end up with a, a, a 16, 8, and a 4x slot. And um, that, that's an issue because with all the PC Express lanes, can, can we say, I don't want to use the onboard NVMe, shut it down, and give me all those lanes to the PC Express slots. That's actually what I'm, I'm interested in. Um, now, for what I'm using, uh, what I'm going to be using that once I get away from SATA, um, is I don't think there's going to be very many situations where I'm using 
the D, uh, the C, and the D drive, which would be on the NVMe um, expander card at the same time. So I don't think that's generally going to be a bottleneck, but I still want multiple 16x slots on high-end um, motherboards. That's just I, I want options. Um, so and I'm not even touching on the the fact that you can't run four uh, memory uh, RAM sticks. Um, in their full speed because they just don't do the testing with that. Um, but that's capacity and whatnot. Anyway, so I don't like that it's an, a PCI Express versus NVMe, but with the NVMe um, drives taking up a lot of actual physical space and pushing components out of the way and whatnot, um, you know, I, I'm actually having to look at um, PCI Express uh, cables and then. Um, when you have a motherboard, a case, uh, not motherboard cases, just the um, the computer chassis or uh, cases themselves, where you have the slot where you can uh, mount the uh, the graphics card um, perpendicular to the motherboard, or, or actually technically parallel to the motherboard because it's normally mounted when you plug it in perpendicular, whatever, um, and then putting all the add-on the add-on cards there instead um, because the, the video cards are getting huge um, but the memory capacity of the video cards is not it's it's not keeping up and so um, low-end cards we don't need more there's no reason to make eight gigabyte or lower end cards at all the market is absolutely saturated for it this is 12 gigs is easily um, the entry level 16 gig cards video cards are lower mid-range they are not even mid-range anymore 20 and 24 gig need to become high-end and we really need to see 32 gig video cards but apparently um worth of the grapevine is that the three gigabit chip uh three gigabyte chips whatever i think that's like 24 gigabit whatever those chips are struggling in manufacturing so we're stuck with very uh, low uh, uh, capacity VRAM on here. So um, yeah, so let's bring it to the chipset. So um, AMD has the extreme version of their high-end um, chipsets for socket AM5, and I honestly think that they um, what they actually do is um, they use two chips. Um, so they use one of those chips for the uh, was it the six fifty? I don't know. Um, the chipsets offhand, and if I try to research everything perfectly, I'll never get the video down and out and, and post it. Um, so it's, please forgive me on that. Um, so I really think that we need more PCI Express lanes on the extreme boards. I don't think we need as many extreme boards, but I think that we need more op. I, I think it, it shouldn't be NVMe versus PCI Express. Now a lot of people are like, I only plug in a, a video card. Why do I need more PCI Express slots? Yada yada. Um, so that's going to bring us to the trash onboard audio, and I know uh, I don't know what most people out there are using for their onboard audio, but onboard audio is trash. It's like don't even include it for crying out loud. Um, and I think it's like ALC, and there's some others. There, I have never plugged in to onboard audio and had it like wow, this is this is okay. No, it's always been trash. You can hear the uh, the fuzz or the whining from the the motherboard electrical whatever. I don't you know I'm not a, a super technical uh, in regards to how all that works and how to reduce noise. Um, I have always had a creative sound card, uh, add-on card, dedicated card, and the audio quality is superior. And um, the only problem is that getting 5.1 um, sound out of that. Um, and having it work with Windows is been challenging. It can be done, but it's very combative, and that's an issue. Now, granted, I have a card that's probably 10, 12 years old. So, um, so anyone who actually cares about having a quality experience with their, with their computer, um, you, you can't use onboard audio. Um, honestly, high-end motherboards, if we're talking like the, the 70 series motherboards, should either have like creative or equivalent quality onboard audio, or just no on onboard audio at all. 
period. Um, the Onward Artist is trash. It is trash. I cannot overemphasize that. And for those of you like they, that have never had an onboard audio um, sound card, even a cheap sound, um, like, I, I, you could probably get, like, a old uh, Creative X5, brand new, because they have, you know, they have, have more in stock and they couldn't sell them over the years. Um, but I'd recommend a, a new, new, newer X5, and even those are really old, relatively speaking. They don't make a lot of them, uh, but they're super cheap, uh, and... It's something you have to kind of experience, and you're going to say, wow, yeah, this is a huge improvement. Um, some people who don't care about details and that the onboard audio is working, and you think it works fine and you don't want to spend money, then uh, that's fine. But it's the kind of thing where you can buy it and it'll get you through three, four generations of motherboards. Um, so it's, it's not like you... Um, you buy a motherboard and that's it with the uh, with the CPU generation that you stuck with it with, with Intel an example. So um, debugging LED codes on motherboards. So those used to be on all the socket AM4 motherboards and now they're on they're se they're used as segment socket AM5 motherboards and I think that's absolutely trash. What do these things cost? Like thirty cents or whatever the actual part cost, um, and when going to socket AM5, now I got to deal with um, criminals from the Florida Sheriff's Association criminal organization hacking my computer on occasion, and so this is a lesson of, you know, you want government interference, that's not government, but I'm not going to get into all that right now, um, because there is no government, it's all, we're dealing with anarchist state nonsense, but, um, so when I hook up my socket AM5 motherboard, um, I've got plenty of reports saying that the motherboard is going to sit there powered on for 20-30 minutes doing absolutely nothing before it finally turns on and posts the screen. Well, when I'm getting hacked to death by criminals, um, the police, police policy, criminal policy enforcers, um, that's going to absolutely destroy me. Um, so, uh, my time, uh, my finances. So, basically, um, I won't, uh, there should be debugging LED codes on all motherboards, period, at this point. Uh, that There's no excuse. Um, and if a motherboard doesn't have that, especially if socket AM5, it's trash, I won't touch it. If you don't consider yourself like a high-value individual and you don't consider your time that valuable and whatever, okay, that's fine. Um, but I think motherboards without LED debug codes are just, what's the point? Because everything plugs in the motherboard, and if there's a problem, you need, you need to have, what do you do? Literally check how many dozens of things are plugged into the motherboard. Um, so, Intel parts on mother, AMD motherboards. So, I know there's a lot of Intel fanaticism. Um, I, I personally hate the fanboy mentality, the us versus them team mentality. That's the political uh, divide and conquer nonsense. Um, but I, uh, the, a lot, when we're talking about performance and, and, and should you buy Intel versus AMD, um, the main issue that I, my predominant issue is ethics. Ethics? What the hell are you talking about? Right? We're talking about performance and efficiency, no ethics. Um, so Intel had, uh, I'm actually going to try to shoot a separate video here to try to make this one a little bit shorter. Um, but Intel basically, they make tons of little chips, and if um, you look at an Intel board closely, the, the right Intel board, because they don't brand the chips all the time now, um, you'll have like the LAN chip is, is branded Intel, maybe the audio, I don't know, there's a lot of little chips that are branded Intel, and so they, they force it so that way, you want a new Intel CPU, you need a new Intel motherboard. Why? Because you're going to buy not just the Intel uh you know, the CPU, but you're going to buy all, all little Intel branded chips on that motherboard. They are anti-consumer. They are anti-competitive. Don't buy Intel. Period. Uh, and I'm going to drive on that, uh, that point in the second video here. Anyway, so Intel makes profit from forcing to buy uh, new motherboards uh, because of all the minor chips that, uh, that they make that they plug into the motherboards. And I think it's really... Um, 
I think that that's it, that's basically um, criminal conspiracy. It is criminal. It's not. And eh, maybe it's criminal. It it is. That is explicitly criminal conspiracy, um, especially when you have a manufacturer that can throw its weight around. Uh, we know Nvidia does this all the time, especially with the um, the crypto boom and then the not AI, but we're going to call it AI boom. Uh, it's, I think machine learning or something like that. It's not actual AI, artificial intelligence, um, but buzzwords and all that nonsense. So basically, um, yeah, it, it's criminal conspiracy um, among many other um, criminal charges uh, that should be thrown their way, but we have to have actual courts for that. So um, those are my um, the, the issues that come to mind with motherboards. Uh, I'd really like to see NVMe get wires. I'd like to see um, kind of like a, a standardization. Uh, now I know not a lot of people use a lot of hard drives. Like I've used as many as all 10 SATA ports on my motherboard, and I don't like that because most motherboards top out at, at 8. Uh, and I'm trying to, now I'm down to, I was able to replace one of my SATA um, hard drives died, um, SATA SSD. And so I took my C drive and I ended up buying an NVMe, um, second NVMe, but I had to return the first. Um, so later on down the road, got uh, my second NVMe drive that's in my, my main system, but I can't run it RAID uh, because of the criminal hacks from the Florida Sheriff's Association criminal organization based out of Tallahassee. Um, so basically, yeah, um, and I prefer RAID. Uh, I like the redundancy and I like having backups and I like having... Um, you, your backup is your actual backup is not cold storage because if you have two drives and one of them is your backup then you don't have backup you have warm backup a backup is a cold storage so to technically do a backup you actually have to have three drives you just drive it that's in your system live the drive that you've hooked up that's warm because it's temporarily hooked up while you're, you're recloning the drive and then you have your actual cold storage because you're going to have two backup drives to make it count as a backup drive. One's connected to the system, um, one's not. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to flick you guys off. So, um, I think, um, I don't care about Intel. Um, I won't buy Intel. Uh, I have no interest in Intel. Uh, AMD would have to, like, suddenly, mentally make massive chasms of shifts and become criminal for me to even consider uh, using Intel, um, so not interested in that. Uh, I would like to see the extreme motherboards from AMD use a three three chipsets instead of two chipset chips, whatever. Um, again, if I um, uh, get nitpicky about um, researching everything, I'm never going to get this video done and out. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I apologize for having the crappy. Um, I got a Roswell. Um, web camera here, and it um, it's cheap and it works, but damn, the audio quality is trash, and I can't hook up the 4K because I'm not going to bring my entire rig in just to um, bring in a, I have the 4K Logitech web camera, but it only powers on with certain USB ports, and I got the exhaust pointed away down the hallway, so anyway. That's my thoughts on motherboards in 2024. Um, what do you guys think? Um, I know it's... I'm much more of a power user. There's a lot of things I'm, I'm particular about. Uh, most people plug in their CPU, RAM, you know, graphics card, your, your powers, and the drives, and you just use it and go on with it. But uh, I do a lot of production work, so... Uh, here's what you guys think. Thanks for watching.